I'm here at DVD 2016 with Jamie Clark, Head of Marketing for SC Group, of which Supercat are a part, and we are standing beside Supercat's LRV 600, which is being shown publicly for the first time at the show. Jamie, could you talk us through the LRV 600, please? Yeah, of course, Sean. I mean, everybody's seen the LRV 400, which we launched, the Mark II we launched at DSCI um, last year. That's our um, light strike um, LRV that's based on the Discovery 4 chassis, but with a military hamper on the top. This is a 6x6 version of that, um, which effectively is the same vehicle, but we have a modular bolt-on third axle unit that allows you to increase payload and capacity. And when you say it's based on a Discovery, is the, is the modular bolt-on section Discovery as well? Yes, it is. So effectively, it's part of a second Discovery chassis vehicle system axle um, that is then bolted onto the back. So the vehicle can be converted from 4x4 to 6x6. So a user can, can buy a 4x4 and a conversion pack and then, as required, convert between one and the other? Yeah, that's absolutely right. You could either buy the 6x6 and then de-extend it to become a 4x4 or you could buy the 4x4 and perhaps later buy the kit to, to turn it into a 6x6 but the way we see it working potentially is that you'd have a fleet mix so a user might choose to have a number of 4x4s for a certain mission and then some 6x6s as well to work in a support role and, and when you say it's based on a discovery clearly it, it doesn't look like a discovery um, what have you done automotively to, to, to make changes so the basic automotive platform is, is Discovery, apart from the obvious change of adding the axle in the 6x6 version, um, and everything above that is, is ours. So we've adapted it to become an open top military vehicle by taking the cab off of Discovery and putting a military hamper onto it with all of the features that you'd expect to see on a military vehicle of this time. And of course most people will be familiar with Supercats, Jackal and Coyote. Is there commonality between the two? Yeah, and it's in terms of operability, there's a huge amount of commonality. So Jackal, the programme, and also the operational use of Jackal has taught us a huge amount about where things need to be on a military vehicle of this type in order to be absolutely what's needed on operations. Um, and so you'll, you'll look around this vehicle and see similarities um, of where things are placed, where your ammunition is, what, it's got the same gun ring, it's got the same dashboard, so there's commonality and you can get from one vehicle to the other in the dark, for example, and work between the two. So, so a couple of features that you can see in, in terms of commonality, we discussed the dashboard but there's also the jerry can holders here and the door is very similar to jackal in that you can open it and drive with the door open which then allows you to have a bit more space around you and to be able to do what you need to do um, also load equipment in load ammunition in some other common features that you'll see here that have come across from that operational use of jackal are in particular the dashboard it's very similar to a jackal so therefore the operator can get from one vehicle to the other at, at night and, and feel comfortable and know where everything is things like weapon holders again we've got them in exactly the right place smoke grenade discharge um, switches are there um, the commander's gun mount in particular is, has been developed to be exactly where it needs to be so you can actually use it properly and likewise all the ammunition trays are tucked under the dash there which uh, initially doesn't seem like a big issue but actually when you've used a vehicle on operations you need to know where that stuff goes and Jackal and our experience has allowed us to do that. In particular it might seem like a, a fairly minor thing but um, there's mug holders in there you can see which again have been put exactly where they're needed because it's quite an important part of being out in the wet and cold is having a, a cup of tea um, that's been made in your boiling vessel which you can also see behind you. And Jamie, I'm looking around and I'm seeing a couple of other novel features, the air cleaner maybe and the, and, and the power bulge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can see how that's been integrated into, um, into part of the structure. In this particular case, it's the wire cutter, um, the cutter bar that runs up the top there to protect the crew from any wire obstacle. And again, moving forward over to the, to the nose of the vehicle, you can see the power bulge there on the bonnet. And that's not just there for vanity. Underneath that is a bank of alternators that provides enough power generation to support the systems that you'd have on this kind of vehicle, be that communications or ECM or otherwise. And, and standing beside the vehicle, um, height-wise, will it fit inside a Chinook? Well, that's the key part about this vehicle. It's designed to go in a Chinook, um, but be tactically loaded. So we all know Jackal fits in a Chinook, but it needs to be stripped down and folded down, and you can't get it in with your operational load on board. The whole idea of this vehicle is to fill the gap below that for a truly tactical CH-47 um, fighting vehicle. So you can get in the Chinook with all your kit on board, drive out, and do what you need to do. And, and can you say anything about interest, trials, uh, anything along those lines? 
Well, the most obvious um, initial point of contact for us in terms of potential sales is our existing customer base. Um, we've, as you know, we've got specialist forces across the globe that have bought the HMT. Um, they've all got that capability gap for something a little bit smaller um, that complements it. So it's part of a, a fleet mix. Um, but aside from those um, who are interested in it and have seen it, um, there's also um, more conventional forces globally as well that would need a WIMIC. Uh, and, and finally, Jamie, for those people that, that might not be quite up to speed with the, the, the SC Group, SC Supercat branding, could you just clarify that for us, please? Yeah, of course, Sean. Uh, um, SC Group um, was rebranded, or Supercat was rebranded to become SC Group, which is now the umbrella company that sits across the top of the other companies within the group. Supercat looks after defence, and we've created a new brand called SC Innovation that looks after the non-defence part of what Supercat used to do. So SC Group is, is, is the umbrella, and the other sub brands within the group sit below that. Excellent, thank you very much.